Hi, yes, it's yet another video on a precision current source. I've done a previous video on this, a two-part one, where I uh, designed a precision 1 amp current source. Well, as it so happens, I also need a precision 1 milliamp current source and also a precision 1 microamp current source. And the LTC 6655 we used in the previous videos, which you if you haven't seen them, you should. They'll be linked in down below here. And... That chip, uh, you know, we had a few issues with the stability of that thing. Gave me the heebie-jeebies. So I wanted to try another circuit which has been around for a long time and it's uh, been touted for uh, that time as you know, one of the world's best uh, precision current sources and it uses the REF102 voltage reference from uh, Burr Brown, the old Burr Brown which are now owned by uh, TI of course and there's a whole application note which once again I'll link in down below, check it out, it's um, how to use this REF102 uh, 10 volt voltage reference, pretty good voltage reference which has been around for donkey's years uh, and you can uh, hook an op amp onto it and a precision resistor, bingo, you've got yourself a low current uh, i.e. sub uh, 10 milliamp uh, precision current source. Great. So uh, where we only want one milliamp here and also uh, one microamp. So not a problem. I thought I'd give this a bell with the REF 102 and the recommended uh, OPA 277 op amp here. And you've got your load uh, standard configuration we, in which we looked at in a uh, previous video. So I've built it up here on a breadboard and we'll see how it performs. You'll notice no bypass caps at all here, no load capacitors at all, not really required. They do recommend an input bypass cap, but not, you know, uh, really required. The ultimate application here is going to be powered from a couple of uh, 9 volt batteries. And of course, the aim of this circuit is instead of, you know, the ground pin here being grounded and you get your precision 10 volts out of your voltage reference here, uh, what it does is it lifts that ground pin there with the op amp here and it it's still, uh, this op amp does whatever, well, this op amp does whatever is required to the ground pin here to keep the voltage reference across here, 10 volts. And of course, it's wired as a voltage buffer. So the voltage here equals the voltage here minus the offset voltage, which we'll uh, talk about uh, shortly. Then you get a, a, that precision 10 volt voltage reference across your resistor here, which can be a nice precision resistor, which we're going to use here today. And using Ohm's law, you can calculate your load current going down to ground here. So that's all it is. Neat little trick, raising the ground pin of your voltage reference. Let's see if it works. Hey, we had issues last time with a uh, application note data sheet. Let's see if this one does the business. I think it will because they've done a whole separate application note on it. Has been around for a long time. Fairly confident this thing's going to work at the low currents. And once again, thanks to uh, Uval at the uh, Pre Vichy Precision Group who uh, supplied me samples of these very nice, in this case, uh, VHP 100 uh, reference resistors here. Um, 10k at 0.01%. They're actually, this series VPH100, actually capable of better than that. I'll link in the data sheet down below. Awesome little resistors. And here they are in a very nice uh, hermetically uh, welded sealed uh, can like this. They're a bulk metal foil uh, resistor. Near almost zero uh, temperature coefficient. You don't really have to worry about it. These are 0.01% but they are available in 0.005% um, values to order. So these are really nice uh, resistors. Basically no with the Z foil uh, technology, basically no uh, inductance and no capacitance. Rise time of like one nanosecond. Brilliant devices for uh, you know high performance pulse applications, things like that. So but fantastic for use as a uh, precision reference resistor like we're going to use here. Oops, did I mention that these were uh, Z foil technology? No, they're not. That was the resistors in the previous video. These ones are the bulk metal foil technology. They have various technologies available to give different uh, precision and uh, tempcos and performance and all sorts of stuff. So these are slightly different to the ones we saw previously. And the good thing is you can order them in any value you want, any resistance value. Just specify it. Doesn't cost any more. Awesome. And here's our little circuit, the REF102 over here and the uh, OPA. 277 which of course you need an op amp because this is a 10 volt voltage reference we power it from like something greater than uh, 12 volts or thereabouts so you need a high voltage uh, op amp to go along with that and the um, 
uh, OPA 277 does that, only a uh, 20 uh, microvolt uh, or 10 microvolt offset voltage or something. It's incredibly small. So there you go, don't need any uh, bypass caps on this. I think we'll get away without it. And uh, basically we've got our input over here. This is our voltage input. Here's our ground and here's our output here. So I've got the load connected uh, directly across the output to ground. And in this case, the load is my Agilent uh, current meter up here. So we'll just, you know, so basically the load is just the uh, current shunt resistor inside here. You know, it, for all practical purposes, it's basically a uh, short circuit. Power the thing down here. I um, set a uh, current limit, you know, 20 milliamps, something like that, just so nothing blows up. And uh, 13 volts, I don't know, 13? Sounds like a lucky number to me. So we'll use 13 volts. We just have to be above. Uh, 10 volts. I'm not sure what the exact value is. I think it's a volt or two above that we need to operate. 13's a treat. Now it's pop quiz time just like in the previous video. I'm actually pretty confident this circuit as I've built and hooked up is not going to work. It's not going to give our precise, uh, you know, 10 volts across 10k resistor. It's not going to give our cells a precise 1 milliamp through our load here to the multimeter. And, uh, you know, if you want to try and figure it out on your own, stop the video now. I have actually mentioned the reason for it in a previous video. Just think about the circuit and how having a very low value load on here could affect its performance. So there you go. If you want to go figure it out, please do. Otherwise, let's power it on and uh, see what we get. Here we go. Channel 2. On and bingo. Look at that. There you go. It is not... It's not... It's not... It's fairly close, you know. <laughs> 1.03 milliamps. But hey, we expect much, much better than that. So what's going on? Hmm. Now if we actually measure the voltage directly across the resistor there, we expect 10 volts out of our... Oh, I've got the leads backwards. <laughs> all the electrons will fall out. No, that's all right. But look, there it is, a 10.357. Basically corresponds with the meter up there. So it's not precisely 10 volts. So why aren't we getting our precise, uh, you know, 10 volts out of our voltage reference? Hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, for this video, I couldn't get the super duper accurate uh, C version of the Ref 102 voltage reference. It comes in different grades, as most voltage references do, if you check out the data sheet. If you're going to order a voltage reference, be very careful which one you actually order. In this case, I've got the A version, which is only 0.1% uh, nominal accuracy. So, you know, it's not as good as it can be. The C version is 0.025%. But in this case, our error is a whopping. 3.5% so it's certainly not the ref 102 that I'm using here it's certainly not going to be our precision uh, Vichy resistor here not a chance it's not going to be our op amp down there well is it hmm and if you did stop the video on trying to figure it out and I hope you did now, I'm uh, the reason is very simple this OPA 277 uh, op amp because of the very low load on here, effectively a short circuit, shorting it down to ground here, it's not able to, there's going to be a minimum output voltage it can actually drive on there. So we're going to actually get an error on there due to the op amp because it's trying to operate down near its negative rail down here. And even if as mentioned in the previous video, you use a uh, precision rail-to-rail -rail op amp, they aren't really rail-to-rail -rail when you really get down into the, you know, 0.1% or better uh, margin that we're talking at, you know, the really low voltages down here. Rail-to-rail -rail might mean, you know, a 10 millivolts output voltage or something. Well, you know, that might be okay for a normal circuit, not for a precision current source is going to blow our error uh, budget right out the window. So what we need to do is put a, as we did last time, put a diode in series with this load to lift this voltage uh, on the non-inverting input on pin 3 here up by about 0.6 volts or so. If we have a look at the data sheet for the OPA277 here, you'll notice our voltage output here, this is not a rail-to-rail -rail chip by the way, but even if it was, as I said, it still wouldn't be good enough. So our minimum output voltage here is going to be our negative rail, which is ground, plus half a volt. So, you know, 
it, it's hopeless. We can't, obviously, so we need to boost the output voltage above that 0.5 volts. So one, you know, basic silicon uh, diode drop of about 0.6 volts should do the business. But let's actually measure it and see what value we get. So I'll measure from uh, the ground pin here to the output voltage because effectively we're shorting the output here. So it's you know driving this thing down to a minimum voltage that it can. So let's have a look. Okay, between pin four and six, there we go, not 0.46 volts, close enough to that uh, data sheet uh, minimum value of 0.5 volts. So a one uh, silicon diode drop should do the business. And once we put that in, um, assuming that uh, you know it doesn't affect the stability of it, I don't think it will in this particular case. We should get our precise one volt, uh, one milliamp out of there, and our precise ten volts across our precision reference resistor. So here we go. Let's take our load here, and I've got a little uh, one in uh, 4148 or something like that. So let's put that in series with our ground and. Ta-da! Look at that! I think we're with inside our error margin and uh, if we measure, of course, our voltage across our precision 10k resistor, what do we get? Ta-da! There's our uh, precision 10 volts. Awesome. So, how close are we there? Well, let's get our trusty calculator here. Uh, 1 minus 0.9999 to 1. I think we're going to be really close here, folks. Um, times 100 to give us a percentage, and we're looking at 0.008%. Beautiful. Well within our error budget. So speaking of our error budget, let's take a look at where some of our errors accumulate. And these aren't even all of them. Uh, really, you know, so <laughs> you I don't think I've actually covered them all, which is unbelievable. Anyway, um, when you're doing these sorts of precision circuits, all this sort of stuff matters. It really does. And you can do worst case scenarios and all sorts of things. And, you know, uh, you know, worst case error budget. And in this case, it should have been actually pretty high because if, if we take a look at our ref 102 voltage reference, it, the dominant figure here, I've put them all in uh, parts per million, by the way, PPM, but you can easily convert between uh, ppm and uh, percentage and if you want to do that uh, one ppm equals uh, 0 0.001 percent basically that's pretty much what we're looking at here but anyway uh, the people the dominant figure as you can see here like some of them are going to like be uh, drifts with uh, temperature and time and stuff like that but you know if you just start with your ballpark you know basic and you know top level banner spec of the ref 102 for the basic initial accuracy we're, we're looking at uh, you know 250 parts per million or uh, 0.025 percent for that c grade chip but we don't even have the c grade chip we've got the a crappy a grade chip that only costs a bloody dollar or something like that and uh and that is a thousand ppm. So that's going to dominate here, a thousand ppm. So what we actually measured there just before was a value of um, 80 ppm, uh, you know, different from our nominal expected value, assuming, of course, that our edge lamp meter is absolutely uh, precise and bang on. But uh, yeah, so that's 0.008% is what we actually measured. You know, so it's well within. So the Ref 102 we're actually using is a thousand ppm just there on its data sheet accuracy. So we're already balls in the in right there. Then you've got other stuff like the drift uh, with uh, temperature is a maximum worst case of uh, 2.5 ppm per uh, degrees Celsius. So you've got to take that into account over uh, temperature range and then you've got uh, load regulation or the the change in the nominal output uh, value uh, over the current so it's a 10 another 10 ppm per milliamp error right there and these sort of errors can accumulate and interact in uh, various different ways which we won't go into but uh, ref 10 uh, so then then we've got our line regulation ie our Input voltage here, how does our, our 10 volt, precision 10 volt reference here change with our line or input voltage? Well, 1 ppm per volt. So if we change that from uh, uh, 13 volts that we powered it to 14 volts, we'd expect a 1 ppm change. Hey, let's try that. Here we go. Here's our value. I'm on 13 volts. I'm going to up it to 14 volts. There we go. Not changing anything measurable there. 
No. No, it's pretty good. Anyway, that uh, is your worst case uh, value there. So you could, you know, if you're really doing this uh, for serious business, then, well, you've got to take that into account. It's all part of your error budget. Then we've got our aging of our reference as well. Well, there's another 20 ppm per uh, thousand hours of operation right there. Then we have a look at our, uh, our op amp really isn't uh, contributing much here at all. The OPA 277... Uh, uh, really the only thing we've got to worry about is the uh, offset voltage and the offset voltage of this I think worst case is only 10 uh, microvolts which is equivalent to 1 ppm over our 10 volt voltage reference if you know we were only using a 1 volt voltage reference eh, it'd be 10 ppm it'd be a larger percentage of that but of course if you want to eliminate that you could use a uh, chopper uh, amplifier in there of course instead of uh, one of these um, uh, low offset precision uh, references you can even get much lower than that if you really want to uh, you know gild the lily and get rid of it and then we've got our uh, Vichy resistor here well it's basic accuracy is a uh, 100 ppm or a 0.01 uh, 0.01 percent there and then you've got the stability of that uh, over temperature and time of and, and stuff of uh, 2 ppm and then you've got other stuff like overload as well if there's any self-heating but in this case you know we're not uh, driving any significant current through this, and there's no any significant uh, power dissipation in the thing, so really we don't care about that. But as you can see, you know, all these things, even like a thousand ppm and all the other stuff that we could potentially add in here, we're ballsing it in. We're way better. We measured about 80 ppm. Brilliant. But hey, maybe we're just lucky. Eh, you can't expect this to happen all the time. Okay, so we've got ourselves a fantastic precision 1 milliamp current source, but I mentioned I also want a 1 microamp one. Well, can we just up this resistor here to 10 meg? 10 volts across 10 meg, going to give us our 1 microamp. Well, in theory, yes, but in practice, no. And if you want to stop the video again, here's another pop quiz. So you might have precisely 10 volts across your precise 10 meg resistor here, giving you your precise 1 microamp through that resistor, but that doesn't mean one microamp is going to flow down here into your load like this. Why? Because inputs to two op amps have input bias currents. So there's going to be some of it, tiny little smidgen, uh, you know, a couple of bees dicks is going to fly into the non-inverting input of that op amp. Let's go to the data sheet and find out how much. Well, here's our data sheet again, and this is what we need to know, the input bias current here for our uh, OPA277. Uh, and by the way, just be careful, this is the column for the 277. You can also get dual and uh, quad uh, versions of this. And the different packages, typically, the uh, especially the quad versions, can have bigger input bias currents than the single or the dual versions. That's why they have different columns here. So just be careful with that. So. Let's go back down here. Where is it? Input bias current. Here we go. IB. Oh, look at this. Plus minus 0.5 watt nanoamps. Point for, uh, so let's take that as a nominal, uh, you know, worst case uh, one, uh, uh, one nanoamp there. And a nanoamp doesn't sound like much, but when you're dicking around with precision current sources like this, well, get your calculator out, figure what. Uh, 0.5 nanoamps is as an error on one on a one microamp uh, load current there. Answer 0.05 percent. So worst case, it could be like 0.1 percent. So you know we like uh, my goal for this thing is to be much better than 0.05 percent there. So really, I have absolutely no confidence in this in using the OPA 277 op amp as good as it was for one milliamp. No confidence really, well not much, at uh, getting this thing to work at one microamp. But let's try it. But unfortunately I don't have a precision uh, 10 meg resistor yet, uh, still on order. So I've just got a crappy one, but I have actually measured its value and it's 9.912 meg or thereabouts. So, you know, if it was precise, we'd expect about... Uh, uh, 991 nanoamps out of this thing, or 0.991 microamps. There we go. Oh, getting confused with all these decimal points. And what do we get? Aha, look at that. 1.027 or so microamps. But 
that's rather curious because we actually expect it. So that's above our nominal figure. But if you have a look at the um, uh, circuit down here, we actually expect it to be less because it's going to suck away some of the current into here. So we actually expect our current into the load which we're measuring to be under spec, not over spec. So we'll go back to our voltage reference here and measure it. And ta -da, we're looking at uh, 10.14 volts there. Uh huh. So that's exactly the same issue we were getting last time without the diode. So now our, our circuit parameters have changed and it looks like where our uh, voltage reference isn't working as well. So we're going to put two diodes in series now. And what do we get? Well, it's, you know, it's a bit lower than what it was before, but if we actually measure the reference voltage now, I think we'll find... Bingo! But of course that's not precisely 10 volts, we were reading uh, 9.998 or something before, so I've added in a third diode in series now, and... Bingo! Hey, I think we've solved it. Now the reason for that, of course, is because your voltage drop on a diode is not um, constant. It's going to vary with the characteristic curve of the diode, of course. Look up any data sheet for the diode, and it depends on the current flowing through the diode. That's why we need at least three in series. Once we're down at one microamp, there's, you know, bugger all voltage drop across each of those diodes now. In fact, we can measure that standard 1N4148 diode, of course. You know, I, I, any, any beginner would expect 0.6 volt voltage drop across that. What do you get at one microamp? Let's measure it. 0.26, there you go. You'd think it was some kick-ass shocky, but it's not. It's just a Job Logs 1N4148 uh, silicon diode. Hey, it's right down on the lower part of that characteristic curve for the diode, so the voltage drop is quite small. But we were reading slightly under on our voltage reference here, 9.998, if you remember uh, precisely. Put those into the calculator and, ta-da, 1.008 microamps. That was pretty darn close to what we were measuring before, as you'd expect, because this is just Ohm's law. It's got to work as long as you take into account your um, op amp, as long as you're ensuring that that op amp um, has enough uh, output uh, margin there on on the uh, low side output drive to drive your voltage reference. Oh, and for those uh, curious about the noise, no, on uh, the one milliamp one, no, there's bugger all uh, noise, and that's just the noise of the uh, test setup, pretty much. The good thing about this voltage reference, it does actually have a noise reduction uh, pin as well, so you can put a bypass cap on there if you really want to get the noise down. And if we have a look at the one microamp uh, current source output, check this out, look, 50 millivolts per division, that is awful. We've got some real nasty crap going on in there. But is it the actual reference itself being unstable or is it external noise? Well, it's almost, I think, almost certainly external noise because we're talking about a one microamp current source here. And, of course, we've got these huge, uh, you know, antenna leads just, you know, hanging off here going into our uh, current uh, shunt over there. So uh, yeah, I expect that and we can probably verify that. Let's actually have a look here. Let's uh, cut and let's try and couple in some noise into this and hey, look at that. We're coupling in, ta-da, 50 hertz. So it looks like we're just picking up all sorts of crap with that big antenna uh, <laughs> wire coming off the uh, load there to our shunt. And basically, look at this. Uh -huh. You don't normally see big spikes like that. And uh -huh. let's freeze that and let's have a look at the frequency there. We could see it before, but we're talking one, two, three, four, five divisions between those big spikes there at two milliseconds per division. Bingo, 10 milliseconds. What's that? 100 hertz. Full wave rectified mains. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. No, so what we're doing here is we're getting crap picked up from external in the room and watch this, right? I don't have my LED lights on, my big LED studio lights on. Let me switch them on. 
Ta-da! Look at that. There, where <laughs> some higher frequency. I think if a memory serves me correctly, it was like 64 kilohertz switching or something like that. But more crap just picked up there. So really what we're talking about here is just uh, external uh, noise picked up from the environment here with these big antenna leads. So if we actually disconnect this antenna here, this horrible looking antenna, and we connect our lead over there so our load is basically shorted out but it's kept on the breadboard now bingo look at that no more noise i mean our one microamp is still there if we go down to five millivolts per division there we go we're getting exactly the same noise we were before and like that's just basically the inherent uh, system noise that's not the voltage reference itself and we're getting some 50 hertz on there as well so there's absolutely nothing wrong with that circuit and with that one microamp uh, current generator at all it is just the noise to do with the system around it and well that's perfectly normal and we won't go into geez i could do a whole hour's video on how you know best to uh lower the noise and you know eliminate it from your system and while you're testing and all sorts of stuff like that so yeah i won't go into it so there's effectively no problem with this uh current source down at one microamp either except for the op amp input uh, bias error so i'm probably going to have to choose another op amp from the opa uh, 277 because i think we're just going to get a bit too much uh input Input, uh, bias current there which introduces an error in the load there but of course of course you could uh, you know tweak the the output voltage of this thing to compensate for that input bias current if you really wanted to but you know I'll just probably pick another uh, op amp for there but the OPA 277 is one specifically uh, chosen for this task apparently it is a you know a, a pretty ultra stable sort of op amp so suits this sort of application for raising the ground up quite well so there you go i hope you enjoyed that one yeah this will probably be my last video on these uh precision current sources unless uh something uh you know uh, interesting that comes up but anyway i hope you enjoyed that short little mini series on these precision current sources and there's a lot more as i've explained and shown a lot more that can go into this with actually uh measuring it and uh, characterizing its performance and in the case of the one uh microamp one actually getting you know a noise free test environment and stuff like that anyway ah uh, might be for another day if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and if you want to discuss it jump on over to the eev blog forum the link is down below catch you next time